Previously, we talked about the word dilute, and we said that dilute can be a verb, meaning to make something less concentrated. Or you can describe a solution as being dilute, meaning it doesn't have a very high concentration, it's very weak. The process of dilution is to make something dilute, or to dilute something. In simpler terms, if you are diluting something, you're adding solvent. Generally speaking, most of the solutions we deal with are aqueous, so when we are diluting things, we are adding water to the solution. We are lowering the concentration by increasing the amount of solvent. This is how this could appear in a problem. If I have a 2 molar solution of hydrochloric acid, and I take 35.6 milliliters of it, I then take that sample and dilute it to a new volume of 250 milliliters. What will be the new concentration? What will be the molarity of this new solution? Now, before I even do the math, I'm diluting it, so I know that the concentration has to go down, so it's going to be less than 2 molar. But let's find an exact answer. When you're diluting something, you're just adding water, so you're just changing the liters of solution. What you're not doing is changing the moles of solute. So if we find out how many moles of solute there are at the beginning, that value won't change. It'll be the same at the end. When dealing with molarity, though, we have to remember that we should be in liters. So when I'm given 35.6 milliliters, I'm going to want to write that as 0 0.0356 liters. And then when I'm given 250 milliliters later, I'm going to want to write that as 0.25 liters. Let's start with the beginning. I know I have a 2 molar hydrochloric acid solution and 0 0.0356 liters of it. So as we did in the last problem, we can say 2 molar HCl is going to equal my number of moles x over my volume, which is initially 0 0.0356 liters. When I solve for x, I get 0 0.0712 moles of HCl. Now in the dilution process, that's not going to change. So if I want to find the molarity at the end, I can take the same number of moles, 0 0.0712 moles of HCl, my solute, and divide it by my new volume, which is 0.25 liters. And when I do that, I get 0 0.285, and my units for concentration are going to be molar. Now I don't think this dilution problem was too hard. It's just a two-step variant of the previous problem we did. But the text makes it even easier when Dr. Tro shows this equation. The molarity of the initial solution times the volume of the initial solution will equal the molarity of the final solution times the volume of the final solution. And hopefully this makes sense because molarity times volume will equal moles. And so what this is saying is that the moles of solute equals the moles of solute. And in the dilution process, that's true, because you're not changing the solute, you're just changing the volume of the total solution. So let's take a look at how we could use this equation. Let's start with sulfuric acid this time. I've got a 6 molar solution of sulfuric acid, and I'm going to take 25.8 milliliters of it. I dilute that to a new volume of 185 milliliters. And what will the concentration be of this new solution? So we're diluting the sulfuric acid. We know the concentration is going to go down, but we have to find what the final concentration is going to be. The text shows us that M1V1 is going to equal M2V2, and what we're looking for is the new concentration. We're looking for molarity 2. So if I divide both sides by V2, I get M1V1 all over V2 is going to equal M2. So M1 is 6 molar, and V1 is 25.8 milliliters, and V2 is 185 milliliters. Now you might be shaking your head a little bit because in the previous problem we had to convert to liters, and I'm not doing that here. You don't actually have to here, because if you take a look at your units, the milliliters here cancel out the milliliters here, and then I'm just left with molarity as my unit, which is what we want. I get a concentration of 0 0.837 molar.